We begin on April 21st, 1993, at the Chorus Shrine Circus in Portland, Maine, as Oscar Cloutier and the rest of the clowns were performing before a packed audience. The Shrine of Clowns were a fun group of grown men, believe it or not. We're not professionals, we're businessmen. Could be lawyers, doctors. Oh, the floor's wet. Go, go around. Let we raise money, that goes to the Shrine Hospital. That's what supports it. Go, go around. No, no, go, the floor is wet, go around. Go around. Tim, our clown doodles, became a close friend. Tim is a happy, jovial person. Everybody he came in contact with, he has that unique method of making them laugh. We did a skit. The skit was called Dr. Acupuncture. We had to run probably 100 yards off the uh, set, and Tim, being uh, a little bit on the heavy side, uh, had a hard time with this. Tim weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 375 to 400 pounds. And as we got off the stage, he was panting. Oscar's friend, Tim Gary, had been a chorus shrine clown for 18 years. We had a very successful act that night, so we were kind of joking around, fooling around, and Tim uh, said to me he didn't feel well. Take some breaths here, you know? Take some deep breaths. Sometimes you can be joking around, so you're not sure whether he was joking or not. And then he was coughing and choking, and I felt so inadequate. Hey, let's get the table out. Let's get the table Fuzzy, one of our clowns that was there, and uh, said to me uh, very clearly, you know, he has no pulse. Well, we need help here. Jack, yeah, get some help. Everybody else knows you. Get some help. When we continue. I looked around and saw all these long faces. It was heartbreaking to see them with their fake tears no longer fake. Just moments after the Chorus Shrine Clowns finished their first routine, 50-year-old Tim Gary collapsed backstage and his heart stopped beating. Someone alerted Pat McFarland, who was trained in CPR, and he ran to see what he could do. Obviously, Timmy was in trouble. There was no breathing. His color wasn't good. His eyes were rolled up. When I first touched him and put my hands on his chest, I knew he was dead. There was nothing there. It was like touching a table. As soon as he heard what had happened, Dale Glidden, another Shriner with CPR training, came over to help. When I first observed him, there was no movement, no breathing, no pulse, and so I was really quite concerned that we may even be too late. Three, five, six. When I went into the compressions, I went to the 15 and 2 rhythm. When I realized that Pat was also trained, I still did not back off from the 15 and 2 to a 5 and 1 rhythm that you would use if you had two people performing the CPR. Three, five, five, six. Patricia Bibber, a registered nurse, also happened to be volunteering at the circus that day. Tim was a very large man, and because of that factor, it was difficult. You had to really strain to pull his head back in order to have an adequate airway. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's better. Eleven, twelve. His jaw was locked up and starting to close. And I made a cardinal mistake. I put my thumb in his mouth and tried to open it. And uh, he proceeded to lock down on it. And I almost lost my thumb. Never mind his mouth. Use his nose. Use his nose. There wasn't anything on my mind except Timmy. It was like it's the last thing you can do for this guy. And it's really important that you do just everything you possibly can. Two. It seems strange to be in a position to be doing CPR on a man who was there so full of life a few moments before, putting smiles on the faces of children, and all of a sudden he's there on the floor. I just knew that I had to work extra hard to make sure that this man came back. Keep breathing, Timmy, keep breathing. While he was being compressed, I just kept telling him, Timmy, this is Pat. Don't you give up on me. Don't you quit. And I think the very next thing that happened, I felt him come back to life. You got a pulse? Keep yes. breathing, Timmy. Keep breathing. Come on, guy. Come on. He blinked his eyes a couple of times. And I remember somebody telling me I've established a pulse. And then someone again said, no, we've lost it. Within minutes, a City of Portland Advanced Life Support Unit was on the scene, led by Paramedic Lieutenant Dan Brown. 
clear the way, please? When we arrived on the scene, we immediately evaluated and confirmed that indeed he was in cardiac arrest. This is a very serious condition. Keep going. But good CPR was being performed by two bystanders. Ted. Showing ventricular fibrillation. Ready? I'm going to counter shock. Everybody clear, please? Any pulse for that? No pulse. Okay, continue CPR. I, I was watching the monitor at this point. The monitor uh, didn't CPR. seem to react. Nothing seemed to change, which told me then that there's nothing that we can do about this. And, and you want to chase it out of your mind, but it, you just can't do it. Tim is dead. Let them do CPR, please. Members of the Portland Fire Department arrived soon after. They took over CPR, the ventilation, but at that time we still didn't have a pulse. Do you feel a pulse? Three. No, I don't have one yet. Five. I felt really Check. washed out. I stood back and looked around and saw all these long faces, these sad faces. It was heartbreaking to see them with their fake tears, no longer fake, but true tears coming down their faces. One, two, three, four. Five. To my surprise, after about a minute or two, one of the firemen said to me, Dan, I think we have a pulse. Come on, Tim. He feel his karate. Come on, Tim. Yes. It looked to me like on the monitor that they were getting a heartbeat. And it was erratic, but it was there. And it was slow, but it was there. Continue ventilations. Let's get the back. It's like winning a ball game, winning the Super Bowl, you know. So all of a sudden now you're saying to yourself, maybe this is going to work. Maybe we're going to get him back. Okay. Down. Get up there. okay, let's go. Pull it in. It's safety. Tim was taken to Mercy Hospital, where tests revealed that he had severe blockage in his coronary arteries. He underwent a triple bypass operation and was hospitalized for a month. When I learned what had happened to me and what people had done to save my life, I was, I was just awestruck. It was, uh, I just couldn't believe it. It surprised me that all these people put forth such an effort to keep me alive. It's a new beginning. I think I'm a different person for it. I'm going out and I'm walking, I'm getting some exercise, I've taken off some weight. Somebody just saved my life. How do you say thank you to a person like that or a group of people? You just can't, but just to look them in the eye and let them know that you really sincerely mean thank you. <laughs> Speaking of settling out of court, I was... Yeah. There was somebody we joke about the whole episode today, you know, because we can clown about anything. That's one thing when you get clowns together. And, but way down deep, uh, just to have him back healthy, laughing, seemingly just as whole as he was before, it's just great. Uh, he's a great clown. He's, it's so nice to have him back with us. Hi, guys. Six weeks later, Tim was back entertaining sick and injured children at a local hospital. I think it's a miracle that he's alive today. Tim is a wonderful man, and it's nice to know that he'll be out there making people laugh again, making them smile again, forget their troubles for a moment or two. Well, I'm just a regular guy. I just happen to be there at the time. I think it's tremendously important that people know CPR. It's the only chance that the average person has when they go down. It's very, very important. Because if something happens and you can't do anything, can you ever forgive yourself for not knowing? So, Andy, how long have you been in here? Well, I've been in here five days. Five days? I Apparently, uh, uh, God or the devil didn't want me to set me back to do something. I'm trying to find out what it is I'm supposed to do. Are you sure? Yeah. But until I find out, I'm going to enjoy every day. Hopefully, they'll allow me to stay in the clown unit until the day I die. You're getting dizzy? 